Okay, let's do one more example. So I'm going to get rid of this oval drawing. And we're going to do something a little more advanced. I'm going to say draw sun. We're going to draw the sunshine. And just like before, I'm going to ask for the canvas. Um, and this time I'm going to ask for the x and y coordinates for the top uh, of the sun. And I'm just going to say that my sun is always going to be the same kind of height and width, but I'm going to control uh, the top left corner of that sun. Okay. So when we create a drawing function like this, what we want to do is put all of our metrics at the top and then all of our drawing code afterwards. So we did that here with draw grid. Here are our metrics, things that affect the drawing code. Some of our things that affect the drawing code are parameters that we receive. Others are constant values that we specify. And then we have our drawing code down here. Ideally, we would not have any numbers in our drawing code. If we're putting numbers in our drawing code, that means there are probably things that we could pull out to make our function more reusable. So let's do an example of that. Let's say, let's do this kind of the wrong way first. I'm going to create an oval and I'm going to create this at the X and Y position for the top left corner. So if we go back to our documentation, we can see that when we create an oval, we're specifying the top left corner and the bottom right corner for that oval. So I'm going to use what the user passed in for X and Y. And then I'm just going to say, I want this to be 100 pixels over plus 100 pixels over. And let's see, for my sun color, I'm going to use this nice sunshiny yellow here. Okay. And I'm going to draw this on top of the grid. So I'm going to say draw the sun. Here's the canvas and I want it drawn at 200, 200. Okay. So there's my sun. It's so beautiful. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the border. So if I look at my documentation, I can see that there is a parameter called width, which is the width of the border. So I'm going to get rid of that. And there are a couple ways I can do that. I can just set that to zero. I can set it to none. I can set it to false. I'm going to set it to false here uh, just to say I don't want any border. Okay. So now I've got my the center of my sun. But maybe I want this to be a little more sophisticated. What if I want to have some different rays shining out of my sun? Now, to do that, I'm going to want to say here is the center of the sun, and I want my rays to shine outward from that. So before we can get there, there are some things we need to clean up about how we've drawn this. First of all, let's define up here a couple of variables, a couple of these drawing metrics that we're going to use. We're going to say the width of my sun, I'm just going to set that to 100, and we'll set the height of my sun to be 100. Okay, And so now, I'm going to say that instead of using these very these numbers here, I'm just going to drop these variables in place, okay? And so that's going to work exactly the same way. Now what this allows me to do is it allows me to not only use these variables in my drawing code, but even better, it allows me to create other derived values from those. So for example, I can say the right side of the sun is going to be equal to the starting position plus the width. And the bottom of the sun is equal to the y starting value plus the height. Okay. Now, to make this kind of uh, more consistent, I'm going to change x and y to be sun left and sun top. Okay. So now I have the left, the top, and so the right is going to be whatever the left is plus the width and the bottom will be whatever the top is plus the height. And so now in my drawing code I can say I want to create my oval at the left top until the right bottom. Okay. So once again same result but now all of my drawing code is based off of named variables that I'm calculating based on parameters that are passed in. Okay. So now let's work on those rays. So I want the rays to start in the center and shoot outward 
and kind of go around the sun evenly. Now, if you think about, let's do just the top ray first. So I'm going to draw the sun, and then I'm going to draw a ray. So I want the x and y to be the center here. So I need to figure out the center of the sun. So I'm going to say sun center x is going to be equal to the, so there are a couple ways to do this. So I'm going to just say it's going to be the sun left plus half of the width. And then the y is going to be the sun top plus half of the height. So if I start here and move in for half of the width, I'll get the center. If I start here and move down for half of the height, I'll get the center in this direction. So now I've got my center points. So I'll say create a line starting at the center of the sun. And now how long should these lines be? Well, let's just use some numbers right now. So I'm going to say I want it to, this one's just going to be straight. This isn't what we're going to do at the end. And then we'll just say I want it to go up, 50, we'll say 200 pixels. And I want the color to be the same as the sun. Okay, okay. so there's my sun's ray. It's a little long. Maybe I'll make it 150. That's better. Maybe even just 100. Perfect. So now I've got this line coming out of the middle of the sun. And just to, so that we can see that more clearly, here it is red. So it starts at the center of the sun, goes up. Okay. But if I make it the same color as the sun, it looks like it blends in. And I'm going to uh, make this be maybe a little bit thicker. Maybe not that thick. Maybe perfect. So there's my ray going up. Now I want these rays to go all the way around. Now in general, in drawing code, when, or any kind of code, whenever you want to rotate an object in a circle, you are probably going to use trigonometry. So just keep that in mind as we move forward here. So first of all, let's remove some of our um, magic numbers here we have in our code. So I'm going to create a ray length make that 100, ray width, I'm going to make that 3. So now I can do that. Okay. And so now I don't have any numbers in my drawing code. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and create these rays. Since I'm going to create a whole bunch, I'm going to do this in a loop. So how many rays to make? So I'm going to say ray count equals 10. And I like to keep all these numbers up here because if they're at the top of my function, if I decide to change how my function works, I can say maybe I want to make this a parameter or maybe I want to just change it here. And so keeping all that at the top makes those easier to find. So I'm going to say for i in range there. And so I'm going to be drawing something here. So the question is how do I figure out where to draw these. So I'm going to use a little trigonometry here. And so the two things I need to know is I go around, let's comment this out for a second. As I go around this circle, I need to know where to space these out, what angle I'm going to make with each one. And so to do that, I'm going to say the angle for the current ray and what I'm going to do is just say, now, first I'm going to do this wrong so you can get the idea. So I'm going to say 360 degrees divided by the number of rays, okay? So that's how much each ray would be spaced. And then the current ray will be the ith version of that. So if I take 360 and divide it up into 10 chunks, first I'm going to be at angle 0, then angle 36, then angle 72, whatever i is, I'm going to multiply by 36 to get the angle. Now this will work because my circle has 360 degrees, 
I'll draw the first one at angle 0, then angle 36, then angle 72, etc., etc., till I get all the way around to 360. The problem is that Python doesn't understand degrees, it only understands radians. So, to work with radians, I'm going to import the math library, and then I'm going to say that since a circle has 2 pi radians, I'm going to say I have 2 pi divided by the number of rays. Okay, Just know this is the same as when we were doing with degrees, except we're using radians instead. Okay, so now I need to figure out where to draw the rays. I know I'm going to start drawing them at the center of the sun, but the x and y positions of where they end is what I need the trigonometry for. And so the way I can figure this out is I can say the x value, the ending value, is going to be start at the center and then go out from that in the x direction the cosine of the current angle times the length of the ray. If you don't understand that, don't worry, it's just trigonometry. And we'll do the same thing for the y direction, except we'll use the sine. Okay, So this tells me where the rays will end, so I'll draw from the x and y position of the center to where the ray ends in both directions. And we'll make these red again so that we can see them. Okay, So there are my rays coming out from the center. And you can see we're drawing them evenly spaced based on a little trigonometry magic over here. If I change that back to the sun's color, then we have this nice uh, sun being drawn right here with the rays coming out of the center. Now, since I made all of this drawing code based on the parameters and the constants, and I don't have any numbers in my drawing code, that means I can draw an identical sun anywhere else I want. So I can come in here and say I want to draw another sun at 300, 400. Okay? And so there's another sun at x equals 300, y equals 400. And then the sun is inside that spot. Or I can say, Let's draw one at x equals 500, y equals 50. And here it'll draw the sun right there at that position. Okay, x equals 400, y equals 50. So there's that sun. It's defining the top left corner of that circle. Okay, now let's do one more thing just so you can see how powerful this idea is of defining all my drawing code up at the or all my numeric constants at the top then doing calculations, and then doing the drawing. So let's say I sometimes want my sun to be a different size. So I'm going to create a default value for this scale parameter. Normally the scale will be 1, but sometimes I might want to say the scale, I might want a sun that's half as big, or maybe I want a, scale, a sun that's a quarter as big, or maybe I want to say this is half as big and this is three times as big. So I look at all of my size-related things, and I just multiply the, those by the scale parameter. So now when I run this, my first sun at 200, 200, I don't specify the scale, so it uses the default value. My second one, I make half as big. My third one, I make three times as big. And notice that everything scales proportionally. The width of the rays, the length of the rays, the size of the circle, the angle between the rays, all of it scales proportionally because I created these constants at the top, I base all my calculations on those constants, and then I draw based on the result of the calculations. So this is the pattern to follow. We did the same thing with our grid. We defined our constants at the top, didn't have any calculations, and then we draw based on those values. The other thing this allows us to do is to pull things out of here to easily make them into parameters. So maybe I want ray count to be an optional parameter. So I just move that up here. And then I can say for this little sun, or maybe this big sun, I want ray count to be 20. And so now this big sun has twice as many rays. And maybe I want this sun to have ray count. It's going to be a weird sun. It's only going to have four. Okay, So it's got four rays. Okay, 
And so I can move any of these things into this parameter list. I can make the size be a parameter with a default value. I can make the width be a parameter of the rays, all these different things. Okay? So this is the real lesson we want you to learn with this is not how do you make the best clouds ever, but how do you create a function that lets you specify parameters and create reusable code that behaves differently based on the values of those parameters in such a way that if I give it some set of values, I get this, and another set gives me this, etc. cetera. 